the cytoskeleton is a series of rods that run through the cytosol. Remember, the cytosol is that jelly-like fluid that kind of fills in the cracks of the cell and kind of keeps it expanded as a rough sphere or whatever shape it's going to take on. Uh, the cytoskeleton will support um, cellular structures and that it will also help to aid movement of structures through the cell. There are three types of rods in the cytoskeleton. There are microfilaments, there are intermediate filaments, and there are microtubules. Um, and then you can kind of read the structure, the, what each of them is responsible for. Microfilaments have a spherical protein. Uh, this would be, for example, structures called actin. And we're going to be taking a look at some actin subunits when we talk about muscle contractions. They're really important. But actin actually does other things as well. We'll talk about them down the line. Intermediate filaments would be protein fibers that kind of help to, um, they're like very strong and give structure to the cell. And then microtubules will be cr created by these structures called tubulins. tubulins and this helps with... Uh, transporting things through the cell. For example, if you have a very long axon uh, or a very long structure on the end of a neuron, this helps to carry structures up the axon and back down. If you created a chemical called a neurotransmitter inside of your, uh, near your nucleus, it will be transported down the length of this very long cell by a microtubule. Here we have uh, structures called centrioles. Centrioles are small, barrel-like organelles that are associated with a centrosome. This forms the basis of cilia and flagella. The centrosome is a region near the nucleus that helps to organize the microtubules, organize a spindle fiber during mitosis, which we'll be talking about in the next chapter or in the next uh, unit, I should say, or the next topic in this uh, particular chapter. <clears throat> All right, here we have a cilia. This would be considered an, a cellular extension. So there's three types of cellular extensions. There's flagella, cilia, and microvilli. And it's, sometimes it's easy to kind of get them mixed up. They actually don't show a good picture of a flagellum here, but flagella are going to be, uh, the, the most famous example for humans would be a little tail that hangs off the ends of a sperm. A flagellum whips around kind of like a helicopter, um, what's it called, helicopter blades, and kind of helps with moving things along, like literally moving the cell through space. In the case of a sperm, it helps move the sperm along so that it can eventually find an egg. All right, but what we're looking at here is not a flagellum. This is a cilia. You can kind of look at the actually rather complicated structure of a cilia. These are whip-like motile cellular extensions on the exposed surface of some cells. And we'll be looking at two examples this semester. I'm not sure how much detail we're going to get into it, but Oh no, three examples this semester. So we'll have cilia that are kind of embedded. Um, they are part of the cell. You can see that they're actually an extension of the cell. They're an extension of the cytoplasm, um, the outer membrane of the cell, but they, they have different purposes. Um, all right, and so they help, I don't know, they kind of help to move things along, but they don't actually move the cell. They move things along, but not the cell in particular. And sometimes they're moved by things. They could, for example, receive vibrations from sound and change the cell so that it starts to process sound. So you have cilia inside of your ear, for example. Um, and then this is an example of a microvillus, which is different from a cilia, although it looks a lot the same. As you can see, it's an extension of the cytoplasm. It sticks up there. Uh, the microvilli would be called, they're what we call um, finger-like extensions of the plasma membrane. Their main purpose is to increase surface area. We're actually not going to be looking at microvilli until the second semester of the class when we're looking at the digestive system, um, but the microvilli help to secrete enzymes 
that help with the digestion of food, and they also, to a certain extent, help with the absorption of foodstuffs into the body. And the more surface area you have to do that, the more efficient you will be at consuming food. So microvilli are super, super important as a way to increase the surface area of the cell. Now, this is the first time I'm actually mention, mentioning the word surface area, but surface area is maybe the number one answer to any question in biology. It's all about the surface area. <laughs> and what I mean by surface area is this. I talked about how all important biological mechanisms in your body happen I'm not sure all, but most biological things that happen, most physiology happens across a membrane. The more membrane you have, the more things you can do. If the surface of this cell was simply flat, you'd only have a certain amount of um, surface area and only a certain amount of plasma, of plasma membrane through which things could happen. So you'd only be able to have a certain number of proteins, for example, embedded in the surface there. But if you have all these extra extensions here, that increases your surface area multitudinously. We'll talk about the size difference of a flat surface versus a surface with these invaginations. And so you'll see this all the time in the body. Lots of lot, lots and lots of infoldings and outfoldings in a very small space. I mean, you see it in every single one of the organelles we're looking at. You see lots of infoldings in your mitochondria. You see these sacs in, I'm trying to find the picture here. You see this in the Golgi apparatus. You see this in the endoplasmic reticulum. Lots of membrane in a very small space. Surface area. 